good morning to one and all this is dr pilavanya so today we'll start uh, with our next topic uh, that is uh, law of uh, demand so as we have seen in the economics uh, demand is an, a vital economic element so which the concept work both at the market level and also the personal level it also includes the several concepts like uh, law of demand factors affecting it and eventually it will impact upon the economy at a large so in the economy so demand plays an important level where the market and individual means the individual factors will reflect the marketing factors and it is one of the thing which will affects the economy of a country or economy of any particular part at a large so therefore we can say a student must and should have these concepts right from the beginning and it also help us to interpret the important of law of demand in the economics so we can say that at an individual level or maybe the market level the demand is in a very important concept so when i want to understand the managerial economical features so first of all we should identify that what is a demand it is an essential for each and every students to understand about the demand so first we'll see what is the law of demand in the economics in the economics the law of demand will explains that when other factors remains constant we should commit the consideration saying the factor that other factors means the related factors of demand or the individual product remains constant means they should not be changed the quantity demanded and the price of the product or services so shows an inverse relationship means the law of demand will be verified here by keeping other factors as a constant what is required here one is the quantity demanded and another one is the price of the product when these were contained means the what is the price of the product and for that price how much quantity a individual required to purchase so when we have been identified a relation between this quantity and also price then we can get any inverse relation inverse in the sense opposite relation means whenever the value of a specific product goods or services means here the value of that product means maybe when we quantified in money or pricing sense when that was increases automatically the quantity what the goods we require will decreases means quite opposite here the price increases where we can say it is having in a direct effect when the price goes up of any product automatically the demand what the goods want that will be decreases means this is an inverse relation means opposite relations what we has to identified in the law of demand so particularly we can say that law of demand means where the price increases the demand for any product will decreases at the same way if price decreases the demand will be increases so this is an inverse relationship what we want to say in case of law of demand then what are the things which we can identify in this law of demand the law of demand acts in a fundamental principle in the economics means as we know that the economics where it deals with the goods people satisfactions where we ourselves will go for means and ends means different wants will be there and the scarcity of the product will be there where we want to get some sort of satisfaction with our the money or the income what we are having so here the law of demand fundamentally says that it is an important principle in the economics where at a higher price means when the price of any sort of the goods will increases automatically the consumer will demand a lower quantity of the goods why because here we has to take into consideration the satisfaction of the individuals once the individual want to satisfy with his resources what he was having when the price increases automatically he'll get a less amount of the goods 
So this satisfaction or the fundamental principle of economics where we can identify it, or this demand could be derived with the help of this diminishing marginal utility. So diminishing marginal utility means what the individual satisfaction or an individual when he want to get any satisfaction as the price increases for any economical goods he satisfies the less means his satisfaction will becomes less that is diminishes means decreases. So the fact is that why the demand is derived or law of demand is derived by these diminishing marginal utility is that the consumer use economic goods to satisfy the urgent needs first. Means we already identified that economics will have scarcity of resources and wants are many. So when we are having this sort of equation, when the resources are limited, maybe we take money as a resource, the money will be limited. But the what we want to satisfy, that money can be utilized for the different needs or the different purposes. So in that sense, the consumer, what he will see, what is the first need or urgent need, where I can utilize my little amount of money and get more amount of satisfaction. When you do that one, automatically that comes under the diminishing marginal utility. So here, this law of demand, where we can say that having a market demand and also the individual demand. So when I speak about diminishing marginal utility of an individual person, we can say that an individual person's demand is the personal or um, individual demand. But when I speak about all the people who are getting satisfaction from a certain product or the certain market, then when you add all the consumer satisfaction, then we'll call it as a market demand. So here, the market demand curve is also expressed the sum of quantities demanded at price across all the consumers in the market. Means one side when we say a satisfaction gain for an individual person, at the same way when these individuals are added one after the another, automatically all aggregating of all the individuals, we can express them the sum of all the individuals who derived satisfaction for a particular product in a particular market. Constantly we can say it is in a market demand. So the changes in the prices will be reflected along a demand curve but by themselves they do not increase or decrease in the demand means whatever the consumer's requirement maybe once the consumer will increase the uh, goods purchasing sometimes he will purchase less means the changes increase or the decrease changes whatever reflected in the demand curve doesn't means that it they are totally increasing the demand or decreasing the demand. So the shape and the magnitude of the demand shift is responses to change in the consumer factors means maybe once the demand curve increases or sometimes the demand curve decreases. So the increase and the decrease or the shape will differentiate only based upon the sum of the factors what a consumer consider means the consumer preferences, consumer incomes or the prices or the demand of the related goods. So these are the sum of the things which are responsible for the change in the demand of a certain product or the certain individual preferences. Means we should identify in the changes in the law of demand is due to the change in the other factors like preference of the consumers, income of the related goods and other but not the change in the price. So this is the little bit of explanation where we can say relating to the law of demand. So when I want to uh, go in depth with the law of demand, first we'll see what is a demand schedule for individual uh, demand schedule and also the market demand schedule. So first we'll see what is a demand schedule. So demand schedule is a statement in the form of a table shows the different quantities in demand at a different prices means just it is a tabular form like so it where we can have this tabular form of 
or showing in a different quantities means what the demand we will get means what the quantities of a certain product purchased at a certain price so this is called as a demand schedule so there are two types of demand schedule so one we can call like the individual demand schedule and another one we can call like market demand schedule so once when you comes across what is an individual demand schedule already we have seen in the above slides like what is an individual demand so individual demand means the person's individual requirement of goods and services at a particular price so that is the demanding schedule which depicts the demand of an individual customer for a product in relation to its prices means the individual demand or individual law of demand is the same we want to keep in a tabular form showing that the demand of an individual customer for a commodity in relation to its price so these are individual demand schedule we can identify with an a simple example so for example when you take a price of a goods for a particular commodity x and in the second column we can say that what the quantity demanded of commodity by x so the price we can call x of px and the quantity demanded of a commodity we can call it x of dx so that individual person maybe at a particular time first he have purchased at a price of 100 means he is having any demand schedule that the price of the goods is 100 then he purchased 50 quantity of goods 50 units of a certain product once again when that price is from 100 to 200 means increased double so when the price is 100 he purchased only 50 goods when the price was increased to 200 then automatically the resources in the hand of the consumer may be decreases then he says things that okay we'll go for a little bit decrease in the product demanded automatically he'll go for purchasing of 40 goods then if price further increases to 300 then he further decreases 30 420 when the price is 500 he want to go for 10 products means uh, simply in the individual demand schedule where we have depicted that as the price was goes on increasing step by step automatically the goods uh, purchased by the consumer was uh, decreasing from 50 to 40, 40 to 30, 30 to 20 and 20 to 10. So the same thing when we have depicted in pictorial that is uh, a graph reflection then we can simply say that it is uh, the reflection that is what I am showing on here is uh, the demand curve of an a product. So it is the graphical representation of individual demand schedule where I want to take the represents the demand on the x-axis quantity demanded what an individual if we take like a price of a gasoline a product so where its quantity demanded I want to take on the x-axis and at the same way the price of that gasoline where I want to take on the y-axis so the demand curve shows in the graph of any gasoline this is the example of any gasoline so where you can see what i have told in the demand individual demand schedule where we have seen that at a hundred he got an a 50 units means where we can say like 50 units where he has purchased at some other point as the price was goes on increasing automatically here it has been decreasing the what the quantity demanded by the consumer step by step as it was increasing at the 50 he purchased at 50 units but when the price went for 100 automatically he has wrong with the 70 next 37 next when the price increases he went for 23 so as the price goes on increases automatically the consumer want to decrease the products whatever he purchased so in the individual demand function where we can say that as the prices of the goods was increasing the quantity demanded will be decreases so the same we can depict in case of the market demand schedule 
So already we have seen individual demand means an individual person's purchasing of goods. Market demand means already we have identified that consolidation of all the consumers who has been purchased certain product at a price. Then we can say it is the consolidated statement of the all the individuals as market demand. So the same thing we can depict in case of market demand schedule. So where we can say it is the assumption of individual demand schedule which depicts the different customers for the commodity in relationship with price. Means the consumers or what are the people came across the market how many goods all the people has purchased at a particular price in certain place or the market we can say like market demand schedule. So this also we can have with a little bit of a small exper um, experiment saying that with this example that where we can identify the price of a product for a certain commodity will take like, like an X. So where it price was increasing from 100, 200, 300, 400 and 500 means goes on increasing step by step. So we'll take it two persons or the two people who has been purchasing the consumer. Maybe we'll call like consumer A and consumer B in a certain market. By addition of this consumer A and consumer B, we'll get in a market demand. So what is our market demand? Aggregation of the consumers. So we'll identify here two consumers. By addition of these two consumers, we are able to identify the market demand. So when A consumer has been purchased at a price of 50, then automatically the B consumer is purchasing at a price of 70. So when I want to know the individual perceptions, A having an individual demand of 50, B is having an individual demand of 70. But when I want to know what is in a market demand, automatically by aggregation 50 plus 70 we used to get an A. 120. So 120 is aggregate or the market demand where that 120 units are purchased at a particular price. So in this way we will go for addition of all the consumers. These sum will get in a market demand. So the same way when the consumer at 20 A purchases 40 plus 60 will get an A 100. At the same way when the price is of 300 then A want to decrease. Here we have identified that maybe A or maybe B. Whatever may be when the price was increasing automatically individually they are decreasing the consumption of the goods. When this is happening for an individual here also we can identify the total market demand also as the same like an individual curve it was also decreasing maybe at 100 rupees the people who are purchased at 120 quantity but when the price was increased to 200 the total market demand was decreased to 100 means 20 differentiation is there by increasing of 100 rupees as a price means individually we are finding difference the same we are different uh, depicting the difference in overall the market so along with that when the price is 300 we'll have 30 plus 50 and the total market was decreased to 80. So on for 40 price, 400 prices, it was 60 of total market demand. And when the price was increased to 100, there we can depict that is 10 plus 30, 40 is the market demand. So the same way as individual demand, the market demand is also decreases as the price has been increases. So we have a Showing that uh, this we can depict the same like uh, what the individually the depicted uh, <coughs> the graphical representation. The same the graphical representation we can depict in case of market demand. Where we will take the representation of the uh, market demand on the x axis and also the having the y axis represents the price of the goods. What we have explained that uh, the commodities uh, goes on uh, decreasing when the price has been increased. So in this way we can identify the both that is uh, individual 
demand schedule with the help of graphical differentiation and the same the aggregation of the market demand schedule with the, the example with a small example so with this uh, we'll come to the statement saying that uh, so in the law of demand the first part is that uh, what is the demand schedule so how in a tabular form we divide the price and commodity and the same whatever we have to be depicted in case of graphical representation so here the law of demand as we know the definition says that when the price of a product falls automatically its demand increases and when the price of the goods rises and its demand will decreases and the basic assumption is that remaining other things constant means when this phenomena was taking means the price of the certain goods was increasing and if the price increases the consumer want to get a marginal satisfaction where he decreases his quantity demand this to be followed when other should not be changed means the related factors of the productions or other things in the market must and should be constant so thus we can have an exist an inverse relation between the price and quantity inverse in the sense opposite so opposite relation to be existed to the quantity demanded at price so in our economic concept so we will come through the across that to why how this law of demand could be considered so in the economics what we know it relates to the individuals or we can call like a people so what's the main aim of economics is these people want to use their limited resources and want to satisfy the unlimited wants so as the basic feature or the basic thing in the economics so the people will have very very limited of the resources maybe money will have a limited but with that money i want to satisfy numerous wants but the wants what i am having is that is unlimited so this law of demand focus us saying that when naturally the price of certain commodities or goods increases so the consumer has to identify that which one requires first need to be satisfied means with the help of law of demand i'll identify that what amount of the goods to be purchased at a particular price naturally as we know that people will give importance or priority to more urgent needs rather than the other things where the need could be postponed then automatically first the money or the resources whatever i am having in the hand i want to first satisfy the required ones now maybe we have the two things that is daily requirements maybe food shelter and other things to be required but we have any other things like savings where we want to save for our future once the salary comes or the incomes comes for the individual first he will give preference the priority need is to satisfy food shelter and other things and after that if the leftover money or by the savings he will go for investing or saving pattern so here the law of demand will tells us that the individuals priority to what they required first then afterwards they will give importance to the secondary requirement so this tells us that individual choosing the re limited resources among the numerous wants so for an economic any economic goods the first unit of the goods that the consumer gets in their hands on will tend to be used to satisfy the urgent needs means the consumer whatever he want in ever his hands means the first thing what he want to satisfy is the most urgent one or the satisfaction then he uses the other amount for the other terms of needs so where we can say that consumer has that goods which could be satisfied primarily or first so here this law of demand where it says that a consumer gives priority to the goods which he want to satisfy at first 
so where we can say that is consumer willing to buy at a given price so here the consumer willingness to buy a product and the price of the products will both will plays an important role for individual as usual what we have described in case of market demand curve so always maybe the individual or maybe the market demand so always uh, here that will be means this uh, demand curve will slopes from top to down so here we can see that each point on the curve that is uh, a b c so whatever the points we are depicting upon the demand curve reflects the what amount of the quantity at a q at a given price of p for examples means here the price is on the y axis and also the quantity on the x axis so here for example if the quantity demanded is low at q1 then the price is high at a p1 means if the quantity is medium at a q2 and the price will be medium at three points if the quantity is price is less next the quantity demanded whatever will have at q3 so in this way we can identify this demand curve which is sloping from top to down depicts that the consumer will purchase the goods lower the price higher the quantity demanded if higher the price lower the quantity demanded so this is in a simple example within a simple exam we can explain about this law of demand in the economics so here we can see that uh, the above charts or the things whatever we reflect at the blueprint pointing the demand for a b c so where it will express the relationship between what we explained in the economy that is urgency of the consumer so based upon his need and requirements of the wants and the number of the units what the consumer want to purchase here the demand will be changes means the shifts in the demand that is changes in the demand position or the shape that is downward sloping of the demand curve is reflecting the pattern what a consumer want to satisfy his needs with the help of the available resources so along with that we can also say that the other hand the quantity demanded it is also reflects the point which is in a horizontal means uh, that above uh, graphical representation where we have seen in a horizontal point where changes in the quantity demanded strictly reflected the changes in the price of the product means once the quantity demanded changes reflecting the change in the price which implies us to identify that change in the pattern of consumer preferences means consumer taste or the preferences what he want to prefer once the commodity price was increasing what the consumer is thinking okay the price is more okay i want to purchase i want to decrease the quantity demanded maybe if the price is low automatically i want a large number of goods and services but if the price was going up and up means increasing then i'll try to decrease my quantity why right? because with a lots of money i should get an a little amount of the goods then automatically what i want to do i want to decrease the whatever the quantity i want to purchase so this is happening because of changes in the price why consumer preference was changed only when the price was changed if price was not changed consumer does not want to change the quantity demanded so we can identify here the two ideas which are being reflected so here a common error is used in rising or falling of the price and do not decrease or increase in the demand when the change in the quantity demanded means here the totally the consumer preference why it was changing along with the price means rising or falling of a price will depicts the rising or falling of the quantity demanded so when i want to actually play 
or when I want to actually find out uh, these law of the demand may be working in case of an individuals or maybe the aggregate that is total market, then I should follow some sort of assumptions. Means uh, when these conditions are prevailing in the market, then the law of demand will be considered or happens. Means uh, these must and should be, means the following things which we want to explain, these has to be taken place in the market. So that's why called assumptions. When I want to follow the law of demand or the law of demand once want to reflect in the market, these must and should be constant. So we'll see what are the things which are required to be constant. So the first one is no expectations of the future price changes or shortage. Means compulsory when I want to see that what the price increases, how much the particular consumer decreases or demanded a quantity where the price should not be changed. Means regarding the expecting of the future price, maybe tomorrow the price will go for 100. Maybe today, maybe the price is 50. So if there is an expectation that tomorrow increase in the price, automatically the consumer want to purchase more now itself and want to store in our house. So at that time what happens reverse. So the price increased from 50 to 100 also by expecting increase in the future price. Now the consumer is purchasing more where law of demand will not work. Why law of demand increases the price, the quantity demanded should be decreased. But when these future expecting that further increase in the price, the demand will not be work out. So that's why in the market, so there should not be, but is no expectation relating to the future price changes. And along with that, another one is there should not be change in consumer preference. Means the taste of the consumers of the preferences of the consumer should not be changed. Maybe when he want to purchase a particular product, he should stick on to purchase that particular product. When he got any option that is with a lesser price, more quantity, I'm getting another alternative product. Automatically, consumer want to leave the existing product and want to shift to the other product. So that's why when I want to apply the law of demand, here the consumer preferences means his taste fashions should not be changed. These must and should be constant. And next thing what we comes across is no changes in the prices of related goods. Means as we know related goods comes under the substitutes and complementaries. The substitutes or the things which are one for another. Maybe for example tea and coffee is a substitute. So I can take tea or I can take coffee. Both will satisfy as a morning hot drink. So if it is in a substitute, there we can say inverse relation will be there. Means if the price of the tea changes, automatically the demand coffee will be changes. So that's why we should not take into the consideration. Means or the related goods prices or the demand, they also should be constant when you want to go for working the law of demand. And next, the change in the consumer income means here the change should not be taken place in income of the consumer as we know that when the middle class people with a higher income goes for an upper classes automatically they don't want to purchase the goods what they are purchasing now they want to purchase the superior goods maybe for example as our income is 20,000 or 25,000 the consumer who was purchasing the rice at a price of 40 rupees or 42 rupees when he gets more salary like 50 or 60,000, he don't want to purchase a medium quality of the rice of 40 or 45. He want to go for a superior quality, maybe 50 or 55, where he doesn't go for the demand or the price of a medium quantity of rice. So here we can say that the consumer income shift when it was taken place, the present law of demand will not be works. And next, the changes may be in case of size, age or the composition of the population means related it will affect more in case of 
market demand so when i want to take the aggregation of uh, demand of an individuals in the market there we can identify that if there is a change in the size of the population or age composition automatically the law of demand will not be work when there are lesser people automatically the demand will be changes if that size of the population or the people increases more and they add more number of the goods maybe increase price also will get in a positive reflections so in this manner that should not be changed and next one the government policy so the economical a uh, development or economical progression or economic policy whatever a country is maintaining that should not be changed when government change frequently its policy automatically the law of demand or the goods doesn't reflects its prices in the market then it will not be taken into the consideration so the change in the government policy will also doesn't allow the market to apply the law of demand so the above or the things where we can identify saying that if these was happened or we can consider like assumptions for law of demand only the law of demand works when there should not be no expectations in the future price or consumer preference should not be changed maybe related goods should not be changed consumer income should not be changed and government policy whatever the sense if these are constant 100% the law of demand could be verified in case of market so along with uh, these uh, law of demand and its assumptions we have some expect exceptions to the law of demand means relaxations so sir some type of goods in the market the law of demand does not work exceptions in the sense not work means law of demand will not takes place when the market will not reflect this law of demand what are the reasons for these exceptions we'll see down so the first exceptions to the law of demand is given goods so why we are telling the given goods means uh, these are called as inferior goods given goods means uh, inferior goods so as this was the concept was introduced by sir robert giffen so he says that there are some goods when be compared with luxurious or other or with an unique characteristics so the prices of these goods are very very less so the demand also increases when the price increases and this feature make it as an exceptions to the law of demand means the goods what we use for example uh, we are taking like uh, vegetables or the fruits uh, regularly so when the prices of these vegetables has been decreases automatically when you compared with the luxurious goods so then automatically the price the quantity demanded will also decreases why because the person want to purchase if i get a luxurious goods at a same price he want to purchase that goods rather than these inferior goods so that's why the prices of the goods means when the goods cost is very very less automatically these less priced goods are called as given goods and this law we can call it like given paradox that saying that when the unique characteristics of given goods is as its price increases the demand will also increases means we can't consider the law of demand in case of given goods and next one we can call it like weblon goods so weblon goods means as we can say like it was propounded by thorson weblon who was associated he propounded one doctrine means one law saying that based upon that law here the law of demand will not be worked means weblon in the sense like prestigious goods where we can call it like prestigious goods so prestigious in the means with a high cost and where the goods are displaced for want of prestige but not want of necessary or comforts so some of the prestigious goods may be like diamonds 
So as we know that commonly that uh, in the marriages and other, the middle class people or whatever the maximum people they will to use the gold. But when it is want a prestigious, a celebrity's marriage or a celebrity's functions. So rather than the gold, they go for more premium goods like diamonds. So when the purchasing of these costlier goods, so what the people will think, they want to display their status. They want to show that, yes, at a, with this cost I purchased. They want to show to the society or the people, we are the most wealthiest person. So at that time, once when you increase the price, automatically people will purchase. Means the demand will also increases. Maybe we will see the uh, like designer jewelries. Yes. When we see the cost of normal showroom, when we go for gold or diamonds, the cost will be different. Or when you go for designer jewelries for a specific purpose, maybe marriage. So we identifying like mudra jewelries where we'll have a lot of pendants with god idols or maybe with some other fashionable things. At that, the cost and the price will be more which they will give in an attractive sense. So in order to show or show to the all in a prestigious manner, if the price increase also, they want to purchase those goods only. Means the wealthiest or uh, maybe this is like uh, where we want to show our prestige and other things, the price increases, the demand will also increase. Means here also the law of demand will not work. We can consider it as an a exceptions to the law of demand. Means for inferior goods also, the law of demand will not work. Maybe for very prestigious goods also, the law of demand will not work. And the next, we'll see in these uh, prestigious goods, as the price goes on increasing, the people want to purchase. If common consumer thinks that if the price increases, they don't want to purchase. But in case of these goods, the blown goods, it will go on increase. The prestige value or the law of demand will not work. Why? Because based upon their showing to the public or like we are the most wealthiest people. And the next uh, exceptions to the law of demand is conscious necessaries. Conscious species necessaries. Which means certain goods becomes necessities of modern life. So as we are leading from traditional to modern and more modern. So once the thing which is necessary for us, now it will become as an a requirement. Maybe like comforts, it becomes a necessary. Luxury will become as an a comfort. Maybe in the olden days, 10 to 15 years back, as we have these TVs, refrigerators, automobiles, cars, these are the luxurious items where in a home they are not at all 100% required. But along with the time changes, here these uh, the modern life or the modern people want more comforts and they want to make their life more easy by utilization of these TV, automobiles, refrigerators, etc. So nowadays we'll call it as a necessity for every house to have a TV or maybe refrigerator, mixer, grinder. But when you go back of 20 years before, when they are called as comforts, when you are having a large TV, we call oh, it's a comfort. Or maybe the refrigerator, maybe it's a comfortable. But now everybody requires. So here, sometimes these becomes as a necessaries also. Here sometimes when the price, in spite of it increasing the price also, the people want to purchase as they think it is necessary in order to live a good life or in order to have a comfortable life, we want a particular product. So though they increase the price also, the customer or the consumer want to purchase the goods. So where we can say that in this sector, we terms as a use sector. Means despite of rising in the price also, the people will purchase the goods and services. So this is also called one of the exemptions for law of demand. And next we can come across like ignorance of the customer. So where we can conclude saying that a consumer ignorance, that is that factor, the time induced him to purchase a more of a commodity at a higher price. This is especially when the consumer is hunted by a phobia that high priced commodity is better than quality, 
than a low priced one means uh, uh, maybe we can identify like after corona means uh, before corona nobody has been identified relating to the household cleanliness individual cleanliness or washing of the hands so before 2020 maximum houses don't know what is in a hand wash we can know yes so nobody has been utilized or nobody has been considered uh, utilizing hand wash in their regular life but after corona when they know that the virus is spreading through our hands and others the consumer 100% maybe the price increases also he want to purchase the hand wash and they want to keep in their house means here the consumers was ignored that if there is no corona was there and that virus was not in my house also i want to purchase that goods and want to maintain and wash my hands means here what he has telling he has giving more preference for his healthy one means the consumer's phobia thinking that that is right maybe if nothing is there also i want to purchase that one and i want to use that product so that one we can call like ignorance of the consumers means not knowing is or more uh, alert regarding to the some of the issues when the consumer is of this phobia and having this sort of thinking automatically the law of demand will not be takes place it will gives as an exceptions to the law of demand and the next one we can call like emergencies maybe as we know in case of wars earthquakes so other emergency when one country is uh, declared emergency automatically the operation of the law of demand will not be taken place as the regular businesses regular thinking or regular household uh, way will be changes we become an abnormal one survival is more required there when war is declared so all the people they leave their homes everything maybe we can see in case of ukraine so they went to their motherland so all the left and went to the other nations where they want to get in a shelter the importance is that uh, they may having the money they are may having the goods their own home and everything they left and they went to the other nations they want to survive first of all they want to live and after that they will see the other things so like that in case of emergencies people doesn't think in a common way they won't think in an abnormal or what is necessity now they will give more preference so in this way they become the household is eccentricate in sacrificing and inducing the future prices rise by making the increased purchases even the higher price during this period maybe in case of earthquake swords where we doesn't get normal things we pay more amount and we want to purchase maybe in case of depressions also where we can see that when there is a no fall in the price and is a sufficient introduced for the consumer to demand more so in emergencies uh, we can't expect uh, this law of demand will be operating so here these are the some of the important uh, expectations relating to the law of demand so in this video we have identified what is uh, demand law of demand demand schedules for individual and also marketing and where we have seen the assumptions and also exceptions for the law of demand thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates